all right guys welcome back part three uh finished up loading part two just a few minutes ago and come on down here i was hoping to get these pistons in yesterday but just never did get around to it uh one thing is because i didn't have my piston ring expander tool with me i had to go and get it from the other shop basically that's what this is and it, of course you don't have to have one it just makes life so much easier and they're real cheap uh, pick one up about any parts store carries them so what we're going to do is i'm going to sit right here at this table because i want to i want to put the rings on every one of these and go ahead and install the, the bearing the lower bearing the bearing in the in the rod end on all of them like i said yesterday we're using hastings the guy at the uh machine shop uh that did this engine he uh he used to use cell power rings, and he noticed that they, they, they got thinner, and he had called up cell power, and they said it wouldn't hurt nothing, but the problem is, if you look at a cell power ring compared to this ring, you can see how wide this ring is. The cell power ring is about two-thirds as wide. So it don't seal up the groove all the way. When you get your rings, you're gonna look in the box here, and it's gonna tell you top groove, third groove, uh, second groove, third groove. So that's how you're gonna know which one's which. Now these are molly ring, which means the top ring has a layer of molly. And I'm hoping that you can see. That's the See how much shinier the top ring is? That's the one on the top there compared to the cast ring on the bottom. And on these molly rings, uh, I don't see a dimple that says any way, any particular ways up. And they, they look fairly squared. So they can go in any position, up or down. And on the second ring, I believe it's gonna be the same way. Yep. So the second ring can go in any position. Now if it had a dimple in it, and I don't have one handy to show you what what the dimple looks like, but they would be a dimple in the face of this ring right here. And that would mean that ring goes up towards the top of the piston. The dimple goes up. But these don't have dimples, so we ain't got to worry about it. So I'm going to show you how to uh, how I install the rings. You may install them either, you know, a different way. This is the way I learned to do it. I'm going to have to clean the little table a little cleaner. It's pretty dirty and it's unlevel too, so that ain't going to help much matters. But I'm going to find the number one piston, which should be this one. And these are, uh, I believe, cell power pistons. I have a coating on them. Hope y'all can see. It's coating on the side of the skirt. They look real nice. Got relief valves, and of course, that dimple always goes to the front of the engine. It actually, even, I think that's what that F right there is, front. But you always want to make sure that your dimple goes to the front. All right, so. The first step, you can leave your cap on if it's already on to do this. Is we're going to put the bottom ring in. All right, and the bottom ring of the third groove consists of an oil expand, expansion ring, and they just it, it just butts up together like this. 
and if you look, I don't know if you can see in the camera, but there's little bitty cleats on the side. Let's see. I don't know if you'll be able to tell for this shadowing, but these rings are going to fit. One's going to fit on the lower side, one's going to fit on the upper side, and they'll fit against these little cleats right here, and it'll hold it in. So we'll need two of these. And be careful with these rings here because they will start to start real easy on you. Alright, so I don't know if I'll be able to hold this and do it. I may have put them a lap. We'll just go around. And if you notice these, there's an oil hole in this piston. I just covered it up. Now I can't get, it, get this ring apart to show you. Right there. I don't like to have my any of my uh, ring gaps in that oil hole, so I'm going to move it around a little bit. Now, we'll take one of the bottom, one of the little thin rings, <coughs> and we'll work it around. Careful, try not to scratch the piston up. These, you can't use your, your ring expander with. They're just too, too thin. But we'll put them in a groove here. And that's seated. I did scratch up the piston a little bit, but that ain't going to hurt nothing. Right, and I want the other one to be a little, I, I like it to be a little further away. Or even 90 degrees from the other one. And we'll put the second one in. It helps to have fairly long fingernails. You can use your fingernails as, as uh, guides. And now we got the second one in, and now you want to make sure that that whole assembly will move in the groove. <laughs> move in the groove there, and it will. So that's in. Now we're ready for our second groove, which is a cast ring. Nope, well, this one does have a dimple. Oh, you can see. There's kind of a shadow right here where this camera's at. My finger is on that dimple. Anyway, you can probably see it better right here. There's a dimple there. That dimple goes up. All right, we're going to put this in this ring expander and expand it. And go in the second groove. Now on these, I like for one of them to be here and the other to be here. Like I was saying, the top ring doesn't have one. So it can go in any position. And they'll do that. Especially when you're on camera. Molly rings are a little bit more difficult, I guess. There, goes. there we go. Now, I've got this, this ring groove here. Where's the other one at? That 
one there. I want them 90 degrees across from each other. And there we have it. And now, all we got to do is take off this cap. And these can be a pain too if you ain't careful. And we get our rod bearings. <coughs> These rod bearings, neither one of them has oil groove, so either one of them will work. These are. 001, one thousandths oversized. And we'll put, line the groove up in the, in the bottom. Make sure it seats. Line the groove up in the top. Two grooves are going to go together. And put your cap back on. Okay. Now, I'll, before I install it, I'll put some uh, break in lube on it. But right now, I'm just going to set it back in the box <coughs> and go to number two. So when I get all these done, I'll show you how it goes together in the, in the engine. Alright guys, we got the uh, rings and all on, so now I've went back and put these protectors on the, uh, the bolts. And this is number one cylinder, driver's side, front. We'll make sure our dot is going to the front of the engine. And we got a ring compressor that don't really fit in the groove too good. And I'm hoping it's the right one. I've never used this style compressor before. I may never use it again. <laughs> Unless I'm going the wrong way, man. I don't believe this is the right one. Well, I don't know. I think it's a Okay, here it is. Nah, yeah, that's a little better. Now, my stepson Jacob's here, and he's going to help guide this rod onto the journal. And I'm going to get me a little hammer. And Jacob, you just kind of. You get the camera where you can see everything. And so it helps to have somebody here. And all you're going to do is when you, when you see it come down, is just guide it straight onto the ground there. side here so we can just tell by the marks which way it needs to go. The other side is marked. And 
and then we'll flip it around and do number two cylinder. <laughs> When you do number two, you want to make sure your rod is all the way up against where it needs to be and it's in the way. Same way with this one, we're going to put it in dot facing forward. Hammer handle. I always want to try to use the wood. Am I coming in straight? Yeah, but it ain't going to fit on it. There's the wheel. Grab it as far as it goes, right there. Mm -hmm. It'll come back now. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Well, when we get it down, it's going to look like that. You put your cap on and what I usually do is do one and two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And uh, it gets a little bit hard turning it once you start getting stuff in there, but it'll be all right. And uh, I'll show you what it's like when we're getting done with it. All right, guys, we got them all in. And uh, one thing I failed to mention earlier was you want to make sure these walls are really lubricated. So I went back and poured oil around them. And on these that I hadn't put anything in, I just took oil, put it in my hand, just wiped, wiped the walls good. You can see it's all over the, the head here of the block that have to be cleaned off. But I'm going to make sure you got plenty of oil on these cylinders because we're going to be moving these pistons up and down. And uh, you're going to move them every time you go to chain. You'll know, put uh, each one of them in. And uh, of course, we'll be moving them now to torque the rod bolts so that'll be next uh, so let me get set up and I'll show you how that goes all right the way it is right now we can torque this set and maybe this set and then we'll turn it and torque these other two so maybe we may end up having to turn it but I've got my torque wrench set to 45 foot pounds That's it. Well, I guess that's uh, all for part three. Uh, it's probably going to be a long video. And uh, I'm going to have to degrease this block now. I got oil all over the side of it. But next video will be installing the uh, oil pump. Uh, Probably the timing, probably put the cam in, install the timing chain, front cover, and oil pan. And uh, we'll be through the bottom end, and we can flip it over and start on the head, installing the head. So until then, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more.